Hello, welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm doing a get ready with me and talking about why I gave up on my year of no dating. So if you want, if you watched my channel before, then or like if you've seen that video because that's one of my most watched videos, I made this whole video about how I wasn't gonna date for a year, um, and I lasted like four, five months before going back. No, not five, four months before like going back on the apps. So I just want to talk about why I did that, um, what my experiences have been like and how it's different from before. And also I need to get ready. So I thought it would be good to do both together at the same time. So this is my favorite skincare product of all time, the I'm From Rice Toner. So if you watched that video, then you know that I had a lot of bad dating experiences. I don't know how much I said in that video. Um, there was a guy who slapped me in the face. There was like a situation shift that I had for most of 2022 that I was like obsessed with. Like I was really into him and he did not care if I lived or died. Um, so that's cool. Um, and then there were like some other random people. There's also someone that I'm like friends with now. I don't know if he watches my videos, if he does, hello. Um, but he kicked me out of his house during TFL strikes so I can get home. Um, yeah and that was not good. Yeah, I just dated like a lot of not nice people last year. Someone else I dated who I know doesn't watch my videos like, but we're friendly-ish. Um, I feel like he just wanted extra female attention and he has that now, so good for him, I guess. Yeah, I just stopped dating. If you wanna know all the reasons why I did that, you can watch that video. Um, and then this is the next product. This is the Beat Energy Ampule, also from the same brand I'm from. A lot of my friends were like, you're not gonna be able to last year. And I was like, yes I can. And they were right. So I guess my friends know me better than I know myself, which is nice. Um, but yeah, I think like the main thing that made me want to date again is I was talking to my therapist about this and she was saying like, you can't heal outside of relationships. Like, what am I gonna do? I've had like, you know, problems with friends and stuff as well. Like, am I just gonna cut off all human relationships until I've like achieved this nirvana level of understanding how to interact with other people and how to like be functional as a human being? Like, no, you're not gonna fix your problems by like avoiding interacting with people. And also she was, I think I felt bad for like wanting to be in a relationship. Like I felt like that was, a stupid thing to want and so it kind of became like this self-punishing thing of like oh i shouldn't get to have what i want or that it's like stupid to want to be in a relationship and i don't think it's stupid so and so far i've only had one horrible experience i've been on three dates and this horrible experience wasn't with any of those people i went on a date with but i thought it'd be a cute fun get ready with me story um if you know me in real life you probably know the story maybe not like the full story but you know enough um now i'm using my moisturizer which is the physio gel calming relief. All of these things I cannot buy in the UK, so I like wait till I go back to Asia or like ask my parents to buy them for me, which is, you know, kind of annoying, but whatever. Um, so basically I matched, so I downloaded Hinge and Bumble again, and just to say now I'm not on dating apps, which I will explain why in a second. Um, but yeah, so I matched, I was on Bumble and I matched with this girl on Bumble. She was really pretty, really nice. I felt like we had a lot in common, like a lot of shared interests and like a lot of the same values. Um, and she was a bit older, like we matched when I was 22 and she was 26 or 27, I want to say. Um, but yeah, and it was very love bomby from the beginning. If you don't know what love bombing is, it's like when, so I think love bombing has changed in meaning because of like the internet or whatever. I think initially it was more when someone is abusive and then they try and get you back by love bombing you. So being like, oh, I love you, buying you loads of gifts, showering you with loads of affection, etc. But I feel like now love bombing is just meant to use like any very intense level of affection that's like disproportionate to how someone should actually act. Um, so she was very like, I really, really like you. Like I can imagine myself falling in love with you when I meet you, like very intense stuff. It was all very intense and like, I kind of tried to set boundaries, but it was hard and you know, I'm still practicing setting boundaries. So that was difficult. This is the Biore sunscreen um, because 
Yesterday, I got a really crusty tan, and I was like, I haven't been wearing sunscreen, I haven't been on my good skincare, and I don't want to get skin cancer and die, so I gotta put sunscreen on. I really don't like this sunscreen though, like, it smells so um, alcoholic to me, probably because there's alcohol in it, and so I just, like, I like how it looks, and I like how it feels, but I hate the smell, so I just don't like the user experience, so I'm just trying to use it up. Um, and then once it's used up, I can switch to something else. But yeah, so she was very love bomby. And then I'm not gonna like air her dirty laundry, but basically she had like a family issue where a close family member was like sick and then passed away. And she was very much like dumping that situation on me. And I was able to somewhat, you know, set boundaries and be like, hey, like I shouldn't be the person that you talk to about this, etc. Um, but then I think this person passed away and she, was, she got very quiet, which is like, fair enough. Um, and then, I'm so bad at multitasking. So she got very quiet and like didn't really speak to me, which is fine. But she would text me and be like, oh, I'm still really obsessed with you, blah, blah, blah. And then she'd be like, oh, I have to say, we like never met. Um, and like we had planned multiple dates, but then she kept canceling because she had to go to Brighton to like be with this family member or like deal with this situation. Um, even though like we both live in Hamburg and London, but she was like from Brighton. So yeah. Um, and she was like, I'm so really obsessed with you. Like, I so really like you. Keep in mind, like we had only been talking for like two weeks, um, but she was very like, I'm really into you, da, 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 da. And I'm like, this has been the worst week of my life, except for you. Like, if it wasn't for you, I don't know what I would do. Basically, yeah, just like acting in a way that's like really disproportionate to how long we've known each other because like we hadn't met, we'd only been talking for two weeks, so we're basically strangers. But I very easily like fall for love bombing. I think like because I really like crave affection, so then when someone gives it to me, I'm like all in. Um, and I think like she has a really anxious attachment style and that like triggered my anxious attachment style and so it was not good. But anyway, um, so she was like, I feel really alone, blah, blah, blah. And then it was a bank holiday. So I was like, I want to do something. So I texted a couple of my friends being like, do you want to do like a trip somewhere in the UK? But like no one was really free. Um, and then I had a friend who lives in Brighton and I was like, oh, can I come see you in Brighton? But she was busy. Um, and then when I was talking to this Bumble girl, um, I was like, oh, do you want me to come down to Brighton? Because she kept saying like, I feel really alone, blah, 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 like I wish I could see you. So I was like, do you want me to come down to Brighton? And I, in hindsight, I was like wrong. For, oh, I didn't say what I put in my head. I put the Body Shop Ginger Sculpt Serum, which like my ex bought me so long ago. Cause like me and my ex have been broken up for a year and a half. And he bought this for me like the Christmas before we broke up. So this is, yeah, like a year and a half old. And I finally like got around to properly using it. And I really like it. So, you know, shout out to my ex for buying me that. Um, anyway. So next thing is the Argan Oil of Morocco Hair Oil. I'm trying to just like finish this up. I do like it, but I used to use a L'Oreal hair oil that I like a lot better. Um, but yeah, so anyway, I was like, should I go down to Brighton and blah, 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 blah. And then she was like, I don't know, I don't know. And I was like, okay, why don't I just come down? And then when I'm there, like we don't have to meet up. I'll just, you know, it's Brighton. Like there's loads of stuff to do there. So she was like, okay. And then when I was on the train, she was like, oh my God, are you actually on the train? And I was like, yeah. Um, anyway, I, I do think it was a bad idea for me to go to Brighton. And I think that it was like me not having good boundaries. And I think that that was like a mistake. And even though it was partially because like, I wanted to help her and like be there for her. I do think it was also selfish of like, I wanted to see this person who was like providing me affection and validation and whatever thing that I needed. So yeah, like I'm not saying this story is her fault. I think I was, I shouldn't have gone down to Brighton. Anyway, so while I'm on the train, she's like, are you actually on the train? And I was like, yeah, um, but we don't have to meet up if you don't want to. And she was like, thank you so much. Like, this is so sweet. This is like outside of the movie. To be honest, like this is exactly what I needed. Thank you for doing this. Cause like, otherwise I would have just been like, I don't know. And like not been able to decide, blah, blah, blah. So, I was like, okay. And then she was like, when is your train coming to the station? And I told her and she was like, oh fuck, like that's in 20 minutes. Like I'll get ready, blah, blah. And I was like, should I meet you somewhere? And she was like, no, I'll take you to the train station. 
So I was like, okay, I'll see you at the train station. I'll see you at the train station, but like, there's no rush. Um, blah, blah, blah. She's like, okay, like, I'll get ready now. Da, da, da. And then I went to the train station. I text her and I'm like, yeah, here. And she's like, oh, I need a bit more time because like, I still need to get ready and walk to the train station. That's going to take more than 20 minutes. Like, Brighton's quite small, but like, obviously there are places where it does take whatever, like half an hour to walk to the train station. Um, so I was like, okay, that's fine. Like, I'll just wait in the prep, get a little, like, what do I get? Pastry, coffee, whatever. Um, so did that. And then, um, I was waiting in the prep and it had been like another 15 minutes and I was like, hey, like, what's your ETA? And she was like, oh, sorry, like, I still haven't showered yet. Um, and I was like, okay, that's fine. Like, I thought it was kind of weird that she still hadn't showered yet, but I was like, whatever, like, clearly she's going through something, so she might not be the best with, like, time and efficiency. I'm putting lotion on, I'm not just being weird down here. This is the lotion. It's Ritual of Sephora Magic Touch Body Cream from Rituals, and I do really like the texture because it's really thick and I have really dry skin, especially on my legs and stuff, but the smell is so strong, like, I always use my use this, so, yeah. Anyway, so I was in the train station waiting for her, and then, yeah, it had been 15, 20 minutes, and I was like, what's your ETA? And she still hadn't gotten ready, and I was like, okay, whatever. So I was like, that's fine, like, no rush, just let me know, um, and she didn't rush by, so then I was in the prep for, like, 45, 50 minutes, for anyone who's not in the UK, prep is a coffee shop. Um, so I was in the prep for 15 minutes, and then I texted her at five zero, and then I texted her being like, hey, um, I'm just gonna like walk around, let me know if she still wanted me up, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm being so slow. Like, I'm coming. So basically she like said multiple times, I'm gonna pick you up from the train station. Like, I'm still coming, blah, 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 blah. So I was like, okay. And then I was walking around Brighton and I went to like the lanes where like the shopping and stuff is. Um, and then I sent her my location and I was like, hey, like I'm here if you wanna meet. And then she texted me being like, to be honest, like I'm really stressy about this whole situation and oh no she said tbh i'm really stressy and i was like about what and she was like about everything and i was and she was like i feel like um what did she say like i'm gonna be really bad company and i was like um oh and i had like bought her roses at the station and blah 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 so um she was like i feel like i'm gonna be really bad company doodly do the job and i was like mm, that's fine like you don't have to you know be a certain way whatever um and then I was like, uh, just let me know like if you want me up or not so I know if I should be waiting for you or not. And then she blocked me. So like on WhatsApp, it was only one tick instead of two. And then she just never replied. So that's like, obviously she blocked me. Like obviously one tick can mean anything. It can mean like your day's just off or like you turned your phone off, but it was for a very extended period of time. So like I know that she blocked me. Um, and then I went to the beach and I cried and then I called my best friend and I was like crying on the beach with these roses and it was kind of like main character <laughs> energy like in a movie like Angus Long's Imperfect Snogging type thing especially because Angus Long's Imperfect Snogging is in Eastbourne and I was like wow like that's so me right now except I was mostly focused on the crying so I had my roses and I was like crying on the beach and I called my best friend Mia and thank god for Mia because she picked up the phone and like comforted me blah blah and then my phone was like didn't have enough battery um, and I was like, fuck, because my train tickets were on my phone. So I was like, maybe I should go back to London. And then I texted two of my friends from, well, one is like one of my close friends from work, the one who I had originally like gone and texted and said like, oh, do you want to do something in Brighton because she was busy? And then another one was like, he is a work friend, but like we hadn't hung out outside of work before, but he's like a really lovely guy. I really like him. Um, and so I texted both of them being like, hey, are you around for a drink or a coffee or whatever? And neither of them replied. And then I tried to like explore some of Brighton a bit, but I was just like in my feelings about the situation. So didn't really do that much. Um, and then I was like, okay, like I just have to get on the train back to London. Otherwise my phone's gonna run out of battery and I'm not gonna be able to get home. And that's gonna be the worse. So I was like, okay. Um, and then when I was one stop away on the train, like I, it was one stop away from Brighton, like I had just gotten on the train. 
um, my friend from work, the one who I had hung out with outside of work before, texted me and he was like, oh, sorry, I didn't see this. Like, I'm still around if you want that drink. And I was like, oh, I just got on the train, but like, I'll come back. So I came back to Bryson because I was only like 10 minutes away on the train. And I didn't like want it to be a waste that I traveled all the way down to Bryson um, for that day. So then I was like, yeah, like I'll come back to Brighton. And so I met up and I was like, BT Dubs, like I'm gonna be crying, well. And so um, he was like, okay. And then he picked me up at the train station, which was very kind of him. Shout out to Alex, like he is like the nicest man I've ever met in my whole life. Um, and he, so I told him like a way briefer version of what happened than what I'm saying right now. And um, he bought me a tea at the coffee shop and I was like, thanks, shout out to Alex. And then my other friend who also lives in Brighton texted me, the one who like I wanted to meet up with but wasn't free and she was like, I am now free. Um, Cause I think I told her like I was crying on the beach and it was so cute. She told me afterwards that her boyfriend was like, we should look for her like across the whole beach. And my friend was like, uh, this is a giant beach. We're never gonna find her doing that. So I thought that, that was really cute of him to try and find me on Brighton beach. But anyway, the three of us, me and my two work friends, um, we're having coffee together and then um, we went back to my friend Salma's house and she has like the most beautiful house. Like her and her boyfriend Dylan decorated it so nicely. Um, and like just all the furnishings look so good. All of the paint looks so good. It's just, and then they have like a huge bay window with like the beautiful CD. Like I love her house. Like every time I go there, I'm like, should I move to Brighton? But anyway, so I had a really nice time as a four and like we just hung out and like talked and talked about life, talked about books. Um, because obviously like my two work friends also work in publishing. Um, and then my friend's boyfriend Dylan, like he had done philosophy at university as well. So yeah, it was just like, it ended up being a really nice time. And because like they're all quite a bit, not quite a bit, that sounds like they're so old. They're, they're like a bit older than me. And so it was like nice to learn from like their advice and experiences, not just about like this Bumble situation, but also about like um, just life in general and like career and all of those things. So I ended up having a really nice day, even though it started out like in a massively chaotic way. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do my eyeliner and talk at the same time, but I'm gonna try my best. Um, so yeah, it ended up being a nice day. And that was like my one bad dating experience I've had this year, I'd say. Um, and then I went on three different dates from people that like I met on dating apps and there was nothing wrong with any of those dates. There was just like no, well, I mean the man that I went on a date with, I feel like there was something wrong with him. Not like mentally, but he, he was just not my type of person basically. Like he's not someone I would want to spend time with. The other two people I went on dates with, like they are people that I, you know, could be friendly with. Um, but there was just no spark. So yeah. And then I went to my friend's um, house party and I met someone. Oh my God, no, I literally cannot talk and do eyeliner at the same time. Sorry, there will just be a few seconds of silence while I do my eyeliner. Um, so yeah, I went to this party like that my friend was hosting um she's like my friend from school here and it was really nice because like i feel like i've really reconnected with her especially over the last few months so i thought it was really nice that she invited me to her party and she's a very nice girl and i'm like really glad that you know mia just texted me saying are you awake i am awake um it's like 11 o'clock anyway uh i'll reply to her after i finish this video but yeah, um, I went to this party and then there was this guy who came in and I was like, he's like he cute, but like nothing's gonna happen. Cause I just never think that people are gonna find me hot when I'm actually hot. Um, but long story short, I felt like a big spark with him and like we kissed and it was like literally the best kiss of my life. Like I felt like I was in a movie, but then he went to Romania for three months. Like he's in Romania now. Um, and that was last weekend and 
then he like he gave me the ick. So originally I was like, wow, I'm in love with my life. But then he gave me the ick. So I was like, okay, whatever. And then um, I that experience made me go off dating apps because not because I was like I met the love of my life. Oh my god, I keep messing up this eyeliner because I'm talking. Um, it, it made me go off dating apps because um, I was like, clearly I'm not going to figure out if I like someone or not via a dating app. Like, clearly I'm having way more of a spark in person. So I just need to follow like that. And also like, even though I do want to be in a relationship, um, like it's on my vision board. I'm going to post a video about like hot girl summer blow up. I don't know if that will be before or after this one, but in it I talk about my vision board and being in a relationship is something that's on my vision board. Uh, but yeah, I just don't want to force it through dating apps because I just feel like through dating apps it feels forced. Like there's only one person that I've met through a dating app that I would say like I really, really liked and had genuine feelings for, which was that situation ship that didn't care if I lived or died. And he was like the first person that I met off a dating app. So I just feel like I just need to go to like more situations where I would meet people in real life um, and that would be a lot better. But yeah, I just think, you know, I do want to be in a relationship, but I can't force it. And I think like this time around trying to date after the break that I took and like after talking to my therapist about it and after like reflecting, I just realized like you can't. I mean, obviously I knew before you can't force it, but I think now I'm trying to like notice the person way more rather than like the idea of being in a relationship. Like I think in the past, this man I met at the party would not have given me the ick because I would have been so like in delusional land about how this is like the next level of my life and like go crazy over it. But then the fact that I was like able to get the ick kind of shows me that like I'm less in delusional land and like I can actually have some critical thinking skills about the people that I interact with, even if they are very good kissers and demonstrate to me like the best of my life. So yeah, basically, I just don't think, I'm hoping that I'm in a relationship soon, because as I said before, like that's something I want, but if I'm not, you know, it's not the end of the world, I will hope. So that is the current situation with dating. Um, and all of my friends were right that I would not last for a year, but I'm glad that like I tried. And also, I don't think that this is like a failure to be honest. Like originally I was gonna try to this video like, um, year of no dating, I failed. But to me, I don't think that it's a failure because I think that it showed me that I have, you know, put in a lot of new boundaries and that like, I don't go on second dates with people that I don't like and I don't try and force a spark and that like I don't have to live so deeply in Duluth land. And yeah, the situation with the Bumble girl, I think was like a really good example of how healing only happens in relationships. Like I could say as much as I want, like I'm healed, I know how to set boundaries, but like in the actual situation, I set a lot more boundaries than I would have in the past, but I found it really difficult. And so like now from that experience, I can learn, okay, this is the thing that I found difficult. Like this is what I can do in the future to make sure that I'm not in that situation whereas like if i was just punishing myself for like wanting to be in a relationship and not dating then i wouldn't have that experience and then whenever i decided to go back into dating in the future like i would just fall into the same traps and then be like wow i failed at healing and like would just continue to punish myself and that's really silly and not you know the way i want to behave so yeah so that's why my year of no dating became a third of a year of no dating, but I think that it was the right decision for me. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little get ready with me. I feel like only my real life friends that live in different countries enjoy these videos because it's like they get to catch up with me. But hopefully someone else out there enjoyed this video because I really enjoy these types of videos. If you would like to see more videos like this from me, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and comment down below anything you want to comment down below. If you would like to see more videos like this from me i think i might have already said that um hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you're notified every time i post a new video thank you for watching